This is a live look outside the courthouse where history will be made today in Manhattan as the first criminal trial of a former American president will get underway in that courthouse in just about just under two hours. Um, our next guests are going to be talking about what starts today, and that's jury selection. Um, and one of the things is uh, the effort to find holdout jurors. We'll talk about what that means. Uh, let's bring in former U.S. attorneys and MSNBC contributors Chuck Rosenberg and Barbara McQuaid. Barbara, let's back up a little bit. A lot of people will really start to tune into this for a number of reasons. Um, there's been a lot of delays and a lot of waiting for this trial to begin, a lot of debate over whether this is the more serious or less serious trial, whether that even matters. Um, and what is on the line here? Um, I would like to know exactly if you could explain what this trial is about. I know it's centered around a hush money payment, but what will the prosecution be trying to prove here? So, Mika, the indictment alleges that Donald Trump falsified business records, which is a crime in itself under New York law, but it's a misdemeanor. It becomes a felony, however, if those falsifications are done to conceal some other crime. And the other crime that is alleged here is campaign finance laws. So it is the theory of Alvin Bragg that these records were falsified on the eve of the 2016 election, also at the same time that the Access Hollywood tape had been revealed to the public, in which Donald Trump, of course, spoke very disparagingly of women, and that the need to, to conceal these records was to promote his campaign and prevent the disclosure of these very damaging allegations that otherwise would have come out without the payments to Stormy Daniels. They were instead uh, uh, booked as if they were legal fees to Michael Cohen, when in fact it was reimbursement to Michael Cohen who had paid this hush money. So, Chuck, uh, Donald Trump has taken to Truth Social this morning, post after post after post, um, complaining about what's about to happen in a couple of hours. Give us a little bit, of, if you will, as to how you think jury selection will play out. But, but just also go big picture about, about why, why this really matters. It feels like we've been living with this idea of so long that Donald Trump's going to be charged with this. And he, we've seen him in court a bunch. But today's different. It's the beginning of a criminal trial. And a former president of the United States is a defendant. That's right. So it is different, to your point, Jonathan. Uh, Jury selection should not be a mystery, and it should not be complex, and it shouldn't take all that long. And maybe I'm biased because where I practiced as a prosecutor, it was fast and efficient, and you inevitably seated a fair jury. And I think they'll get there, too, in this case. It may take a bit longer. Procedures in state court in New York are different than procedures in uh, federal court in Virginia, where I was. Uh, but the goal here, Jonathan, is to get a fair jury. And you can be fair if you're a Democrat or a Republican. You can be fair if you watch Fox or MSNBC. People are remarkably good at putting aside whatever opinions they may have, whatever preferences they may have, and as the judge will instruct them, focusing on the facts adduced to trial and applying the law as the judge instructs. Uh, so I think a lot of this is a, a, it's a bit of theater. It's a bit of a dance. Mm -hmm. The faster we get through this process uh, and to trial and to adducing the evidence and calling witnesses and introducing documents, I think the better off uh, we'll all be. And Chuck, some of the details that along the way here, obviously Donald Trump is under a gag order. There's probably running bets on whether or not he breaks that or already has. Mm -hmm. um, the concern, of course, is when he does that, he endangers the lives of people uh, and drums up anger, um, uses it to his political advantage. But really, it's for the safety of the people involved with this trial. Um, what are the consequences if he does that? I mean, we haven't really seen consequences play out on the breaking of gag orders along the way with Donald Trump. Uh, will this be different? It may well be, Mika. Look, you know, it's an incredibly crass thing to do. To your point, it's also an incredibly dangerous thing to do. And it also, if you just take a step back, makes absolutely no sense. It's like if you're a pitcher and you're walking out to the mound in the top of the first inning and you stop by home plate to tell the umpire that he's stupid and corrupt and, and, <laughs> and incompetent, I'm not sure you're going to get a lot of close calls over the balance of the game. Mm -hmm. So th as a strategy, it makes absolutely no sense to me. And by the way, if he's convicted, this very judge who he has been castigating and the judge's family who he has been criticizing publicly, this is the guy who's going to sentence him. 
Uh, and so to me, you know, crass and dangerous and ineffective, but maybe that's the game plan, uh, Mika, for reasons you and I just can't fathom. Hey, everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.